morning and welcome to Plain Speaking, a voice of the Democratic Party. I'm Frank Rosen, who your moderator, and I would like to introduce our stellar panel, whom you should get to know pretty well by now. They're part of the family, the family that cares for you and Pennsylvania and America. To my far right, ooh, I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> Robin Arndt, who is currently a vice chair for the uh, Blair County Blair Democratic Committee and a member of the state committee and running for re-election for that position to my extreme left. I love that I love word. <laughs> Tom Patterson, who has been with us for several months now and is doing an excellent job as a proponent of the democratic way of doing things. To my right is our resident researcher, presenter, George Thompson, who has to have three people come in here with the materials he has <laughs> to support his voluminous research. And to my immediate left, Jillian Kratzer. Kratzer. I pronounce it Kratzer? Kratzer. Kratzer. <laughs> and she has been certainly a welcome addition to our Democratic family and has been very active. She's also our webmaster and our Facebook uh, director. And we encourage you to go to our website and to our Facebook with great regularity because there is a lot, there are Absolutely. a lot of things there that you don't know, but you darn well better to find out about. Yes, we like to keep you updated. Okay, good. We have a, a show that is full of or, or contains a plethora of <laughs> items. And uh, George is going to start off by talking a little bit about the American, the Affordable Care Act, which has been d named Obamacare, which, uh, by the way, is, is the law, will be the law, and let us all get behind it and support it because we're the only industrial nation in the world that doesn't have government-sponsored health care in deference to what some of the people running for office are saying, that government-sponsored health care is wrong. They're living in the wrong century. So anyway, George, start us off here so we can take a good look at what well, you well, think of the Bernie issues. Well, what inspired me is an article in the Altoona Mirror last week, and it's uh, by a local uh, uh, fi financial person, actually, talking about uh, the medical care system in the United States and he's disputing that our health care system is not the best health care system in the world. And the way he does that, he first of all acknowledges that our life expectancy here in the United States is lower than in many countries. It's true. Uh, you know, so I'm glad to hear that he does acknowledge <laughs> that uh, we die a little earlier here in the United States than other countries. What he forgets to say, though, as a financial person, not only do we die faster, but we spend twice what other countries spend on health care with no apparent uh, good result. Right. Yeah. Now, I mean, how does this happen where we can spend so much money, but yet have people dying faster than other countries and, and people. In, infant mortality is, in America is yes. well, very well, high. Which he blamed on teen pregnancy, yeah. and that's dubious. Oh. That is a dubious <laughs> plan. I mean, well, he has excuses for uh, different reasons. You know, show why, your work on we, that. And I'll, and I'll even agree with him. I mean, what he's basically saying is the health care, the technical part of our health care system, the part that you have bypass surgery, that you... Uh, you know, take uh, m medications. That that part is working fine. What he ignores, though, is that uh, probably 25 percent of the population can't afford to attain this premier health care. Because that's the that is the problem. And when Republicans talk about this uh, health care system we have, the best health care system in the world, there's a portion that they forget to add on to that sentence. We have the best health care in the world that money can buy. And if you don't have the money, you can't buy it. And that's really what Obamacare is trying to overcome, uh, this inability of people to afford this premier health care system that we have. Absolutely. And th those people are driving down our national statistics. So in a way, I do agree with his observations. But he, he has this very narrow focus on what a medical uh, system is. Yeah. For example, he blames suicides. We have a higher rate of suicide than most countries, and that's really not part of our health care system. Wrong. Is mental health not part of our health care system? Mental health has traditionally taken a back seat. 
Yeah. Uh, the way we look at it here, because other countries attached, have yeah. a more holistic yes. uh, uh, view of uh, health care. There was a, a stronger emphasis on health care when the, those horrible school shootings came out. Mm -hmm. But they restricted that health care to that specific issue you know, of, of mass <coughs> killers. And instead of expanding it to health care for the whole country, and you know, there are people out with the article in the paper today, this t guy beating a baby. Breaking yeah, an arm that, and yeah, that, uh, that's a local. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, but it's, it, it's obviously mental health involved there. I mean, nobody in their right mind beats a baby. Well, I, well, I just saw Commissioner Witzel on uh, Pennsylvania Cable Network. He's the uh, commissioner of uh, the prison system of corrections here in Pennsylvania, and he said that twenty percent of the inmate population has mental health issues. Ten percent of them serious mental health issues. These are the words he used. And 70% of the people in prisons have uh, substance abuse problems. Now, these are all traditionally viewed as mental health issues. And by the way, these are all supposedly addressed by Obamacare, which somehow we haven't even uh, cho uh, taken. Uh, the federal government's paying 100% for uh, treatment in right. the mental health area. And, and here we're spending, we're already spending the money a little bit in the prison system. Yeah. I mean, the inadequate uh, treatment. And, and these people, they just come out of prison. They're addicts. They, they need treatment. Well, if our governor would accept the, <coughs> the money from the Medicaid provision, we could eliminate or at least mitigate some of these problems. But he refuses. And we're looking at losing upwards of a billion dollars. And what it is, is a double expenditure because if we had that billion coming in, then the billion that they're collecting from taxes that is now going for Pennsylvania to pay for their care, we could be using for other things like schools. and uh, yeah. <coughs> So it, it, it's insane that the man is not, and he's being driven by his Republican cohorts, this anti-government, you know, that's part of their FUD. Yeah. Well, well, let me say uh, another uh, article was in the Altoona Mirror the day after this article I'm referring to, and it's, it was written by a, a daughter complaining about Obamacare not covering her mother, or let's say it this way, being so expensive that her mother couldn't afford to take medical coverage. Now, let me say, for all the people out there, this is not an Obamacare problem, really, because Governor Corbett has elected not to uh, expand, take advantage of the expanded Medicaid that uh, Obamacare offers. And just as an example what this means, uh, I had someone uh, contact me uh, because I've, I'm on the computer a lot. <laughs> and and, and they, they didn't have computer access to go into the marketplace. And this person has a grand income of $9,800 annually. And when I went in, I actually was shocked, thinking that she would be, a, you know, sub, a subsidized health care would be available. But she is one of these unfortunate people that falls in this, this range where if you're actually under 138% of the poverty level and 9800 a year right. is under, Actually, you don't get anything <laughs> you, because uh, uh, the Obamacare was written in such a way where they just assumed that all the states would take advantage of this 100% federal payment for people under 138%. Yeah, to expand and Medicaid. Yeah. To, to expand, expand Medicaid. I, I'm saying Medicare. I mean Medicaid. Medicaid. We know it. Yeah. And people I think make that con yeah. people confuse all yeah. of and, and so I didn't then, uh, you know, okay, she doesn't qualify for uh, any uh, uh, health care uh, subsidy. So she would end up paying approximately $6,350 for her health care. Just remind you, her total income is nine thousand eight hundred dollars. Yeah. So it's obviously not going to work in her case to buy health care. Clearly, but if you plug in eighteen thousand, which happens to be a salary above one hundred thirty-eight percent of uh, federal poverty level, which mm -hmm. then makes her eligible for a subsidy, she actually ends up. Uh, well, there's several plans. Yeah, I mean, that yeah. you can. Mm -hmm. She she has a plan that she'd end up paying zero 
if she actually earned more. If she earned 18000 a year uh, under Obamacare, uh, the expanded Medicaid, she would have insurance for nothing, basically. Yeah. But because she earns less, 9800 refuses to expand Medicaid. Right. Yeah. Governor Corbett is refusing to expand Medicaid. So anyone out there is impacted by this that... Are, are earning like if you're a family of four and earn I think it's thirty two thousand dollars a year, you would have been eligible for basically free health care. Mm -hmm. And, but, and but I think we should interject right here too. Anybody who is listening to the program and has not, and of course our senior citizens, we do, we're not involved in 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 ACA because you know uh, Medicare takes care of our senior citizens, but anybody below the age of 65 who has not applied to the federal government for a review of their individual situation should do so because technically the expiration date for applying is March 31. And if you are on the list of people who've applied and haven't had an answer yet, you can get one. But what George is pointing out is very clear to most people who take a look at it. You can't paint a wide brush and say you can't cover this, you can't cover that. Each individual has got to get an analysis of their individual circumstance. And that's what's making this thing so untenable publicly because those who are opposed to it are using the FUD, I used that acronym a minute ago, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, because they keep saying these things, that you're not going to get covered, you're going to have to pay thousands, and yet people believe it without investigating it. Absolutely. So, I mean, George, the, the research is incredible here. Yeah, it's terrible. It's tragic, actually. You know, so many of the Pennsylvanians that are in this Income level, I, I mean, if you're a single person, you can earn up to uh, $17,000 and end up in, in this donut hole of no subsidy, which means basically uh, insurance is unaffordable Yeah. if you're a single person. If you're over that, actually, it, it's better. Yeah. If you earn 18000 you can get a policy for nothing. So, Terrible. And by the way, if you make minimum wage... You don't earn eighteen thousand. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. You know uh, what we what we ask of the listeners and the viewers. Mm -hmm. Please take a look at this thing more clearly, more in depth. Don't listen to the fear mongers out there, the people who are who don't like Obama, who don't like ACA. Don't listen to their ranting and raving because it is a lie. Mm -hmm. That what these people on the other side of the aisle and the Republicans are re definitely responsible for every single lie that's being told about the coverage of ACA. And we've got to say to the people that these are lies. You cannot accept what they're saying. And this lie could kill you. I actually read an article the other day about Texas, who, once again, Rick Scott did not take their... Rick Perry. Rick Perry. Rick Perry. I'm oh, sorry. Did well, Rick Scott's in Florida. <laughs> He's yeah. just as bad. Yeah. <laughs> did not take either. their um, Medicaid expansion. And there was a woman making $11,000, and she fell in the Republican donut hole. And she died. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, this is life or death. People really do need to investigate. And, yeah. and, and like I say, you do have just a few more days to get your name on that list. Get on their website and at, put an inquiry in that you need help determining your eligibility. Because once the 31st is over, and they're going to find some other ways, I'm sure, to... Well, what, what the president has said is that just like with voting, if you're in line at the end of the deadline, vote. then you can still get That's in. That's right. You know, there, as long as you're in line, they will make sure that you get signed up for some sort of health care. Um, and, and to get into the line is really not that difficult, yeah. although you do need, at this point, probably a computer to yeah. at least get on the marketplace, and you put in basic information about yourself and that gets you in line. Particularly wages and age and, and right. uh, uh, things like that. Now you know locally too another tactic and I don't know if it's a tactic or the people truly believe in this but uh, you know these care clinics are being discussed locally. In other words President Obama's health care initiative of the Affordable Care Act it's like it doesn't exist locally. But Dr. Zane Gates keeps 
uh, his proposal comes up for these health clinics. And I, I was on a talk to someone else about this, and, and I wasn't totally sure how does this fit in, these health clinics, to uh, uh, Obamacare, basically. And, you know, I'm reading uh, the legislation. Actually, I printed out the, uh, the legislation that was passed last <laughs> year. Survive, it's a house bill, Community-Based Health Care Provider Access. You know, what is this? You know, and this is uh, being pushed locally by, uh, you know, different people in charge right now, which yeah. means the Republicans. And uh, I'll just read the, uh, what the uh, uh, purpose of the, th of the bill is. In contrast to the new federal health care law and other proposals, Senate Bill 5 would provide access to actual care, not simply to health insurance. So by this statement, what they're basically saying is that if you have Medicaid, just pure Medicaid, you're not going to get access to health care. That, that's an assumption in this health care uh, bill, clinic initiative. Now, is this actually true? A little bit. I, I mean, uh, I know people in Medicaid have difficulty getting dental service. Sometimes they have to drive to Pittsburgh for specialty physicians. But I would say generally, uh, you can get treated for most uh, of uh, medical conditions with Medicaid locally. I, I mean, this idea that yeah. somehow if you have Medicaid that you're going to be not able to get health care is an assumption in this community-based health care provider system, which is Dr. Zane Gates's program locally. I mean, this covers the entire state of Pennsylvania, but, right. you know, locally that's how it's uh, presented. So is, is any of this true or is it a diversion <laughs> from the Affordable Care Act. Uh, I mean, I think it's a diversion, honestly, and, and I don't think it's feasible either on a state level. I mean, how many of these clinics are there going to be? Is there going to be one in Altoona? Is that enough fund? for everybody? Be, how are they going to be funded? Well, exactly. well, well there's, fund there's funding here. Uh, the idea in the legislation is if there is none that exists, there's a half million dollars, or er, 500 thousand dollars, a half million dollars mm -hmm. of funding. But who's, to, who's to providing start, that five hundred thousand? Uh, the state. But if the state would take ACA money, they wouldn't have to do that. Well, exactly. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> the point <laughs> is, <laughs> it's so much better to spend a half a million dollars yeah, the than to take. Are, are right. draining our budget. And there are so many things that we're being told that we can't possibly spend money on right now, but we can spend money on this instead of getting money from the federal government. Yeah, you know, it doesn't make sense, it I agree. And then another thing you always hear is, well, the doctors, they don't get paid enough under the Medicaid program to render treatment. So they don't get paid that much. That's, that's the local argument of it. Mm -hmm. But somehow this health clinic's going to do better. They're, they're going to get private insurance. That's the other angle With in this $500, thing. With $500,000, how much can they can possibly can pay these doctors? Well, well yeah. that's just to set up the clinic. The actual funding of the operation, I, I don't know if that's going to be included. The doctors are going to volunteer five. out of the goodness of their hearts, but the, that's okay? The, the, the unknown, uh, unaddressed, unaddressed in the bill. I course. guess the bottom line, and we're, look, we're, <laughs> we're trying to get you the best information, there is so much out there that is confusing, that's overlapping, and we want you to understand that that upon very serious review, and you've heard George talk about it, you've heard the other panel members talk about it, the provisions of the ACA, the uh, Affordable Care Act, will provide the kind of care for every single American so that you will not have to worry about who's going to take care of what. So don't be looking at all of these ancillary, these secondary ideas and issues, and please stop listening to those people who are spreading fear, uncertainty, and doubt because mm -hmm. it is destroying the not for the people who are saying it. They have the money and they have the resources and they have the health care. Yeah. They're saying things to the people who are, in, who are eligible for Medicaid. They're telling them, don't do that. But we know they're going to die if they don't. And by the way, legislators that are telling you this have state funded health care and federally funded health care but Full they're family. telling you right that but it's not you can't have it
but it's good enough for them. So, you know, the bottom line is, please, if you have a question about it, there are resources that you can appeal to. And I don't have the, the email address right offhand. Do you know the, the email address to get into the ACA website? Well, you, you just need to type uh, healthcare. Uh, healthcare. 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 You'll get ACA. Come on. But you, you, just, you, can't, you just can't listen to these naysayers. The Republican Party in particular are so opposed to our president, they will, they will actually put the health, safety, and welfare of hundreds of millions of Americans okay. in jeopardy mm -hmm. simply because of their staunch opposition to our president and this ACA. So please don't believe all of the lies and half-truths that you that are being propagated. Be armed with facts. Yeah, be armed with facts, yeah. We're going to take our first break and when we come back we have a couple other topics we want to bring to your attention. But please, please get the information before you believe all of this negativity. When Jamie was a teenager, she would spend her lunch hours going to the tanning salons. I didn't realize how dangerous they were. If you tan when you're young, your risk for melanoma are increased by 75%. That's huge. What I would say to mothers that allow their daughters to tan, no mother should have to visit their daughter in a cemetery. One person an hour dies from melanoma. Jamie's hour was at 1 o'clock in the afternoon on Friday, March 16, 2007. I hope no one else has to mark their hour. This message is brought to you by the American Academy of Dermatology. Savings Man here with a story for you about two young spenders named Tommy and Sue. Their parents let them buy whatever they chose, like video games and designer clothes. As they grew older, they spent all they paid on fancy cars, houses, two lattes a day. They lived in the moment, never saving a dime. When they tried to retire, they'd run out of time. Working forever is Tom and Sue's fate, so choose to save now before it's too late. Visit our website to find out more, because a happy ending's worth saving for. Oh, he's also... Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, plain speaking, the democratic point of view and your point of view, the things that you need to know to protect your own health, safety, and welfare. We talked a little bit about, uh, a lot about, in fact, a, the most significant thing in all of our lives, and that's our health. And hopefully you will take our advice and seek more information because what you're hearing now, at least from the other side, is absolutely not true. Jillian is going to talk a little bit today about... Uh, the right, some of the other issues, and one of them is... Right to work. Right to work, oh. which is a misnomer. Right to work for less. <laughs> that's uh. that's <laughs> it. <Right. laughs> well, we've got, uh, we've got some right to work legislation up right now uh, in our state house and senate. It's uh, paycheck protection. Oh, they only make come you feel up with so, so secure. Yeah. Um, what paycheck protection means, of course, is that um, you're union dues, if you're a member of a union, then your union dues would not be able to be deducted directly from your paycheck as they are right now, which is a very convenient way of doing union dues. You do lots of things that way. Your health insurance, United way your contributions. taxes, your United Way contributions, all sorts of things you can have directly deducted from your paycheck. It's very easy. They do it with computers, so it does not harm efficiency in any way, no matter what you may hear. Um, but this is all about making it more difficult for unions to collect their dues. And the excuse is that um, <laughs> the excuse is that the unions are going to use this money for political purposes, which, which, as we know, is completely false. And it's illegal. And it's illegal, of course. And all unions have political action committees mm -hmm. like all the industries have, mm -hmm. and they are separate voluntary okay. contributions, and not every single union member does contribute. Yeah. So it's not like the union dues from every... Even right. if you thought it was... But it is an absolute lie, and they have said it so often, y union dues are Im illegal to be used for 
contributions. Because honestly, to them, collective bargaining is a political action. And who, co who bargains collectively? Unions. Unions. Uh, well, so recently, the County Commissioners Association of Pennsylvania met, and they were going to look at a resolution to vote on whether or not they support this paycheck protection. Now, they withdrew the resolution a couple days before their event, which, you know, is good. But prior to that, several Republican dominant counties already voted on it themselves. And of course, Blair County is one of them. And as you would expect, there was the predictable two to one split on that where Terry Tomasetti and Diane Melling voted to that they would support paycheck protection, whereas Ted Beam, God bless him, said no, because it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. And, and the truth is that it is a union-busting attempt, it because the, it's very simple for unions to have the money taken out of their paycheck before they see it. And it goes back to what I told you people before, back in 2010 when the Republican governors met in California, their number one national priority was the total destruction of public sector unions. You've seen it in Wisconsin and, and Michigan and Ohio and, and in Florida and now in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Can't we wake up to the fact, folks, that these people, this other party, is on record as destroying the single most important element that brought this country to where it is today. If it wasn't for unions, well, well, well and of course, uh, what, what another factor that's being used to defeat unions is this idea that unions are ruining our economy. If you are unionized, that uh, the employers aren't going to locate in Pennsylvania or in Blair County. Well. I, it's interesting uh, to think about this because here in Blair County already the wages are approximately 20% less than wages in the rest of Pennsylvania. <laughs> By that criteria there should be people rushing, employers rushing to Blair County to set up shop. Right. And Pennsylvania itself is lower than the uh, national average. So one of the uh, arguments being used is, is really not true at all that somehow if you're a right-to-work state that you're going to attract all these employers. You look at the right-to-work state and a lot of them <coughs> ha have uh, grown in, in jobs, but the people that are working are working for the less. The wages, yeah, the wages uh, drop. I'm not sure, and, and in some cases they're being laid off. I, I mean, in South Carolina... And, right and we're subsidizing those people, like with the Walmart employees, because a lot of them need food stamps. There was another article in the, in, on the uh, Huffington or, or the political, or one of those I saw again yesterday, and they showed a map of, of the country, and the red states those states that are most of them are right to work states they use more of the government subsidies for welfare and for other issues than the blue states do yeah. so that's another argument and against a unionization a it's dramatic. a dramatic the red states who keep saying government's too big we don't want government mm -hmm. they get more money back and give less in return than the blue states yeah i mean there's a number of factors an employer would use to decide where to locate. A part of the decision is simply the quality of the workforce. Are they educated? That's a, a factor. Nothing to do with wages. It has to do with the quality of the workforce. Infrastructure. You know, are, are the roads available? Are the utilities available? The uh, tax is another uh, one that's always used too. Our taxes are too high. The corporate Pennsylvania corporate taxes 9.99 percent here in Pennsylvania. Well, you know what? I'm tired of hearing that argument. I, I do believe the legislature has been controlled by Republicans for a number of years. If they're so upset about this 9.99 percent, <laughs> why don't they just change it? They're in control right now. They, they, they have, have all two total branches control, yeah. of government. Well, it, it's like a red herring. They keep bringing this thing up. I don't think they want it to go away. No, because it's like abortion and all these other issues that they know very well are nothing more than social issues. You take a look at the corporations, and even on the Chamber of Commerce, you can go on there website when they talk about this. 70% of all companies that are in Pennsylvania doing business don't pay taxes. Yeah. 
Now, how can they say we have the highest in the country when only 30% at best probably pay them because they can afford to, number one. Right. So, I mean, this whole idea yeah, is nothing more than fear, uncertainty, and doubt in the minds of the voting public. Yeah, Tom, it's well, that Delaware loophole. Well, yeah. Is, is well, another thing they're working on, they're working on the prevailing wage. To get rid of oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the union contracts for construction <laughs> jobs. Any, mm -hmm. Anything you do with the government, there is a wage that they have to pay as a minimum wage. And we have several construction companies in this area that have multiple crews. They have union and non-union. And when it's a non-state job, they got the non-union people work on it. When it's a state job, they have to send the union ones because of the prevailing wage. They want to do away with that. That will bring business in. Yeah. And one you know, of the ways that we can get some relief, hopefully, is to make sure that, you know, you know one of the prime sponsors of the uh, right to work law? Eichelberger. John yeah. Eichelberger, mm -hmm. who doesn't give a hoot Champion about the poor working people. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to bring this up too much, but the people running for the 80th uh, General mm -hmm. Assembly seat in the rest of the Blair County, the two candidates who are registered Republicans are opposed to the minimum wage, they were opposed to uh, unions collecting, they were opposed to health care. One of them even had said a stupid thing about faith-based yeah. health care. Yeah, I'm not sure what that yeah, is. I don't what what, what are they talking based about? Based what, what is faith-based? Yeah, what, what, yeah. what, what are we looking at for all the rest of the county when you're going to send to Harrisburg one of these people who is opposed to everything that the working people need yeah. to manage and maintain a decent life? Well, what he is in favor of, uh, I think this is the guy, is uh, he's in favor of, of course, eliminating the liquor stores. And what they don't say, he's in favor of eliminating the private beer distributorships because this picture that they keep painting <laughs> that you want to buy your beer and wine in a supermarket, mm -hmm. they, they keep talking about liquor stores, but they forget that there's all these private entrepreneurs yeah. that have the beer distributorships that are going to probably go by the wayside because once Sam's Club and Walmarts and supermarkets, their mm -hmm. all big corporations start selling beer. I, I do believe that's the demise of all the beer the distributors. Oh, yeah, there's yeah. no question. But he wants to also privatize the turnpike. Uh, yes. Which <laughs> was uh, uh, actually a Rendell proposal that actually got through the bidding process in some country in Spain, uh, some company in Spain was the low bidder on privatizing the turnpike about uh, three or four years ago. Well, that fellow, he thought that was a good idea. This. I forget his name now. I guess it's Richie. Richie. Yeah, Aaron Richie. Yeah. Richie, yeah, Aaron Richie, Richie, yeah. Who, by the way, proudly says, "I'm a Tea Party member," and you know what they stand for? Take Nothing. That's good yeah. for the American citizens and the Blair County citizens. You can't take away the the basic government provisions that help people who can't help themselves. And that's a horrible thing to put on the record. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, with this privatization issue of the turnpike, as with everything else, you know, you get an amount of money now when you privatize. You know, you're selling this, the ability to, to do this. But then it's gone. That's it. You get that one amount of lump money. Sum. That one lump sum. And it's great for the time being, but then when it's gone, it's gone. And you don't have control of the turnpike anymore. You know, and yeah, you don't have that 40 income. 40 years under Rendell's proposal, right. the Spanish company could charge the tolls, set the right. tolls for 40 years. Right. You and know, and, and I think in retrospect, what happened because of the economic problems that the country of Spain had, yeah, they probably this, co this yeah. company mm -hmm. also ended up in financial trouble. Right. You know, this is in retrospect because our legislature refuse to basically lease our turf yeah. bike for 40 and, years. And let's get to the bottom of it. These companies work for, for the bottom line, which is the bottom dollar. So yeah. their service is going to go down because it's all in the, in the form I of... I found out something very important. When I was a member of the commission that was appointed by the, the city of Altoona to discuss whether or not we should privatize the, this water and sewer. Remember that happened mm -hmm. several years yeah. ago? Mm -hmm. And one of the questions that I asked, we had five different companies from all over the world wanting to bid on the Blair County, the Altoona Water Authority, and so on. And the one question I ask them is, do you represent other like things, or water authorities and so on? Yes, we do. And I said, what would happen if, if in Tuscaloosa, 
there was a major 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 problem and you had to pour millions of dollars into that does that spread out over all the companies that you yes so if you privatize the turnpike mm -hmm. and in Spain you know there's a there's an earthquake or something and there are hundreds of millions of dollars mm -hmm. of unexpected expenditures if Pennsylvania would be helping to pay if they would pu privatize that so the idea of privatizing it doesn't <coughs> help the people locally. We have an obligation. Absolutely. To take care of ourselves. I know we strayed a little bit from some of the things you were talking no, about. about the, <laughs> uh, I, have we it's all related. It's all related. <laughs> well, it's well, let me add something that I right. was talking about too in this road thing. The, there's a, a under Governor Corbett, he's proposing to have a bid for what he calls a 650 structurally deficient bridges. And what he's doing, he's proposing that a public-private transportation partnership board <coughs> handle this bid process. And when the companies, they're all going to uh, bid on a whole range of bridges. I mean, we we got 650 structurally deficient bridges, and that's so they're so they're going to package <laughs> them up and let's say <coughs> ten ten bridges that are in one geographic area and and have similar designs. You know, they're going to have one company bid this out and you know award it to them. And that this is the interesting part. I do believe that they're also going to allow then that company to. Uh, not so much the structurally deficient bridges. Those are the existing bridges. They're going to use this also for new bridges, totally new bridges. And on the totally new bridges, the company will have the right to charge tolls. And uh, in other <laughs> words, we're going back to sort of the wow. tolling of uh, of different roads. And this is done in other states, so this isn't really something that's due. You, you drive down in the Washington, D.C. area, and you have these <coughs> express lanes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they're all toll lanes set up by private companies. The co companies constructed the lanes, and they are the ones that collect the tolls if you choose to use those lanes. So this idea is being floated here, and, and I guess it's, it's going to happen here. Uh, now, I don't know, maybe it's good, maybe it's bad, but uh, I know I get a little nervous, like you say, a private company uh, well deciding see, how much I'm going to pay. I d I'm not aware, and, and if those of you who are interested in doing it, if you want to do some research on it, but I am not aware of any governmental service that was taken over by a private entity has ever resulted in a more efficient and a more cost-effective control of that entity. Because what happens is, as Robin mentioned a while ago, they sound good when they come in and bid. But once they have control, then the, the fees they charge and, and the cost that they, imp they have to extract money for is not in the control of the government. Government should not be subsidizing its responsibility to provide the basic, just like with the charter schools and, and cyber schools and all Absolutely. that stuff, is destroying our country. Mm -hmm. There was a bright ray of hope in the Altoona Mirror again today Northern Campus School District, I don't know if you saw it, the school board up there is recommending that we've got to raise taxes because we, our, our system of education is in dire financial strait. Mm -hmm. And so rather than try to privatize it, they had the temerity to say, we've got to raise taxes. It's going to happen. They're going to be voted out of office party because the tea people, <laughs> the Tetley troops will come in. And once again, if we would in. be taxing the fracking industry, we wouldn't have oh. to worry about that. <laughs> yeah, well, well, if the state would be giving what they used to give, yeah. which is about 50% of the uh, local schools' exactly. budgets, mm -hmm. which income tax or corporate taxes, and not real estate taxes, would be funding That's this. Right. Mm -hmm. the, the, state, this increase, yeah. the pressure to increase real estate taxes is a direct result of Governor Corbett's reduction yeah. in, in the state level uh, support for uh, private you schools. You see, mm -hmm. I, I think we're going to take on the next break right now, but I think, as I've said so, so many times, the, the citizens have to decide do we want these services and if we do then we've got to pay for them and what's the only revenue government has Tax taxation so we'll mull that over as we take our break and we'll be right back <coughs> the road doesn't sound perfect or if you're not the world's greatest camera person we just want to see what you want us to see and to know what you would like us to know 
Your local public access television station has tools and resources to make this possible so that we can see what you see. It's the freedom to communicate, and it's only on cable. such thing as a small distraction. A public service reminder from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons who would rather help keep your bones strong than put them back together. Speak out against distracted driving at decidetodrive.org. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Straight Talk, the party that represents the party that cares for you from cradle to the grave in whatever means necessary. We're going to talk a little bit about getting out the vote. As you well know, May 20 is our primary election date. Unfortunately, we do not have a significant number of candidates running for the positions that are on the ballot. The 79th district, we couldn't find anybody on the Democratic ticket for uh, opposition to John McGinnis, who, by the way, is another one of these. Uh, he was just out down around New York the other day campaigning against a fellow Republican. I mean, this is the kind of reputation this guy's getting. Yeah. Not just as he's saying he, he is opposed to government and all the forms of government's uh, support, but he's out campaigning against them. And we have nobody in the 80th district, which is the rest of Blair County. You know, we only have two right. uh, representative seats in Harrisburg, with the 79th, which McGinnis is running for re-election, and, and there are two, three candidates seeking uh, Jerry Stern's seat. And we briefly mentioned these people a while ago and how they are opposed to everything, and including one of them once did not even tax Marshall the shale. What are we going to do? We're going to get the money to run government. Ah, we're going to have a big hoagie sale. Yeah. <laughs> a big yeah. hoagie sale. Well, but anyway. Well, yeah, and uh, Representative McGinnis, he was an early uh, person who came in out against accepting the expanded Medicaid or accepting anything to do yeah. with Obamacare. And ask him where he got all this money to run for office, too. Well, yeah. Hey. Citizen and uh, students first. But anyway, let's get down then to, we do have, thank goodness, a very viable Democratic candidate by the name of Alana Hartsock, uh, who's running against Bill Schuster. But again, that won't be until the fall. Right. But she's going to be on the ballot. And those of you who are the good Democrats... And there are no bad Democrats. Some may be just a little better than others, but <laughs> we have no bad Democrats. Get out there and vote for Atlanta. And uh, even even put in a, a uh, what's the word, uh, a vote against what's happening in Harrisburg and Washington, you know. Put, in a, put somebody's name on the ballot, you know, just, just to show your displeasure. Yeah. Now, for the, the big races uh, that most of you are aware of, uh, for governor, uh, we now only have four candidates. Uh, Jack, uh, Jack Wagner just dropped out. So Rob McCord, Tom Wolf, Katie, Katie McGinty, and Allison Schwartz. We don't have the time today. We will be presenting a lot of information a little, little later, closer to the primary, about these four candidates and to help you to make up your mind whom you want to vote for. Because our number one priority... I'm going to quote Mitch McConnell. <laughs> we got to get rid of Tom Corbett. Uh -huh. Like he stood on the floor of the U.S. Senate, we got to get rid of Obama. Mm. There are six candidates running for lieutenant governor. We listed them before and... Uh, Do you want me to... Yeah, listen. All right. You, you have... Uh, <laughs> the six candidates are Mike Stack, Mark Kritz, Brad Kaplinski, Brad... Um, Newman. Brad Newman. And I, I Smith don't know. Is I'm Jay Paterno. Jay Paterno, yes. <laughs> that is all of them. There are a number of them. And yesterday was the last day for a candidate to withdraw his or her name from yes. placement on the ballot. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. There are some questions we had heard that, uh, that perhaps Jay Paterno did not have a significant number of authentic 
uh, signatures. We have not heard yet whether... There's a court date uh, on that March 31st, Yeah, I so it's going to be difficult because his name will be on the ballot now. Because yesterday was the last date to withdraw. Well, it was the last date to withdraw. Now, if he loses that court case, will the state take his name off, though? I don't know, because if, if they authorize, like the counties, to mm -hmm. print the sample ballots, right. and they print them today, mm -hmm. yeah. then you can't take it off. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see, and, and we don't know what's going to happen. Right. But those, there were six, and we realize with, with four gubernatorial and four lieutenant governor, it's going to be hard for the voting public to make up your mind whom you want. Now, those of us who've listened to these different candidates mm -hmm. have been there. Robin and I have met most of them down at the state committee. We have a better idea, but those of you who are viewing will just have to get on the websites and between now and the election we will be talking yeah, more about each of these candidates and we'll, I've been trying to contact them and inviting them into our show. We've got no takers yet. Uh, Rob McCord is going to be over in Johnstown today, but uh, there, there wasn't a room in their schedule to get over here today. So those are the uh, elections that are coming up. And uh, like I say, this 80th district general assembly seat in the rest of Blair County, I mean, I don't know if you're a Democrat or if you're a person who is in need of government services, you, you put it in the parlay of the, of the streets, I mean, you're, I don't want to even say it, you're, you're not going to get anything. It's horrible. It is. It's horrible. Okay. Anything else on those, on the things to get out to vote? Candidates. Well, it's important. I mean, our turnout yeah. in the Democratic side has uh, been very low in yes. the, uh, different elections, and, and uh, it really makes a difference. And to me, the frustration is so many of the people that really are benefiting from the government programs, they don't turn out and vote. And, it and I don't them. know what you're thinking uh, that this... Well, it's important to know, and I think that some people either don't know or they're afraid to exercise the right, but your boss has to let you have time to, to vote. go vote. Yes. Now, they, they don't have to pay you for that time, uh, and I understand how that can be a problem, especially if you're a minimum wage worker, but they do have to let you go vote, and you cannot be punished for that in any way. Um, but, you know... Democrats have a problem in primaries. We have a voting problem in primaries. That is something that is yeah. notorious. Um, but we need to get out the vote. Yeah. And you have to understand that even though, you know, yeah, we're not going to win the 80th district. No, we're not going to win the 79th district. But every single person of the 27,000 Democratic voters in this county counts on a statewide level. That's right. And that's a difference that we can make. That's why we need it. Right. And, and the Republicans, they've been wasting money trying to... <coughs> Uh, have photo ID <laughs> legislation passed. In fact, it's still not settled, really. But really, the Democrats, they have legitimate registered voters. You know, 80% of them locally don't turn out. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's really yeah. like the Republicans are just wasting their time on this uh, photo ID mm -hmm. thing well, and money. And just to cap that, uh, although the voter ID thing, you know, may not be settled, you do not have to show your ID. That's right. Don't let them intimidate you. You, if you don't the, have to show a voter ID. The only ID. reason you have to show it is if it is your first time voting in right. a specific precinct. But otherwise, you do not. And just simply say to the person at the poll who says, "Do you have? Let, could I see your ID?" Simply say, "I don't have to do that." Or just a simple no. You don't have to be put on the spot. Right. Now, we have a couple other issues, and we're down to probably about eight, ten minutes. So we want to talk about now. There was a big case. Well, I just wanted Tom to mention real quickly, there was a, a guy by the name of Metcalf who is known to be a little less than, well, okay. He's introduced a lot of weird laws and everything, or, or bills. So what, has he, what is his latest... Well, yesterday, or the day before the 25th, uh, Daryl Metcalf is now reintroducing to adopt English as the official language of Pennsylvania. Uh, <laughs> this isn't the first time, but he wants to make it so that the government, state government, no longer has to print bilingual forms. Uh, now, he, he says here that no hesitation for providing the use of interpreters mm -hmm. in a crime mm -hmm. scene or at the 911 dispatch center. But says some federal mandates require bilingual outreach and public schools would continue to be permitted to spend money on foreign language. So he just wants to tie up the state with pushing English while everybody else 
because the federal government says they can't do that. Yeah. But th this guy, for those of you that he's don't know him, he's the Mr. Anti-Gay, he's anti-union, he's anti-everything. And, you know, they're, they, the people against it says that this is a, what is going to happen is Pennsylvania is going to be less attractive for people to move here. Because they're saying, if, if you don't speak English, don't come here. We don't right. want you. Yeah, well, that's, that's and, uh, absolutely but, obscene. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, she said with an aging population, we're either going to have to have more babies, which they want, <laughs> or, <laughs> or uh, you know, attract the immigrants to come live here and work here and pay taxes. Which he apparently doesn't which want. Which he apparently doesn't want. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of having babies and uh, things of that sort, uh, we were talking earlier today, and uh, there is a very important case before the Supreme Court, Hobby Lobby and uh, another company are challenging the government's right to say an employer must provide in their insurance plan uh, contraceptives and other means to let a woman make her own choice. Jillian? Uh, yeah, well it's specifically Hobby Lobby and the other company is uh, Conestoga Wood uh, are arguing that because the owners of those companies uh, do not believe in birth control <coughs> that they should not be required to follow the birth control mandate and that they should be considered as religious nonprofit organizations who are not required to do so. Um, this is patently ridiculous. And, you know, what it comes down to, and, uh, you know, Justice Kagan asked some very insightful questions about, you know, where does it end? If your employer doesn't believe in vaccinations, do they, you know, not have to, does your health insurance not have to cover vaccinations? You know, what is it? But I think what it really comes down to is this is an anti-woman crusade, you know, to deny women the rights to make decisions about their own bodies. And, uh, you know, it is absolutely frustrating to me that, you know, we have to sit here and, you know, I should have to ask my boss for permission to have birth control and he can say nope I don't believe in that so you shouldn't have that medical coverage you know when does that happen to men well maybe it does about Viagra yeah, and things yeah, of yeah, that yeah. sort you know. there's no prohibition to those kind of Absolutely things Absolutely not. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, the, and the other side of it is too how can a company that is established to make money period that's their whole goal right how can they be a nonprofit to begin with and how can a person, say the president uh, is whatever he is, he says he's a Mennonite, or I don't know what it is, but how, then if for him to say, I'm not going to let my employees buy these things, he's imposing his religious belief on them. And that's patently illegal. How, how yeah, can a, uh, an employer... It's an establishment clause issue. It yeah. really is. And you so... Know, I want to work for a Jehovah's Witness. Uh, I don't think they accept blood transfusions. Uh, no. Right. And so how would you like that? They, they I, I, don't believe and, in... And people like medical. Scalia, who just was quoted in the paper yesterday, of saying that the, how can government be imposing uh, you know, their, their will on these people who have strong beliefs? Well, there's nothing in the Constitution that says just because you believe something that you have the right to... To impose well, that and belief. here's an interesting thing now that you mentioned Scalia is there was an article in the USA Today called Why Hobby Lobby Should You Lose and they said uh, the case law here, he quote, uh, the case law here, Employment Division v. Smith was an opinion written in 1990 by Justice Anton Scalia who stated, we have never held that an individual's religious beliefs excuse him from compliance with an otherwise valid law prohibited, prohibiting conduct that the state is free to regulate. On the contrary, the record of more than a century of our free exercise jurisprudence contradicts that proposition. So now, they should throw that back Scalia, in his face now. Exactly. If Scalia rules against this now, then he is... You know, extending he's extending more protection to corporations than he is to individuals, which, quite frankly, would not be shocking to me at no, all. No, because Citizens United is the prime okay. example of that. Yeah. Now, this new course case coming out is, uh, is another example. Uh, by the way, your question yeah. about how a business can be a nonprofit, it yeah. of course, reminds me how a Tea Party can be a nonprofit, yeah, and not a political action. Why did not report their I, I, do, I do believe the Republican debate was sponsored by the Tea Party. They, as far as I can tell, they do everything 
Yeah, they have political, political agenda, parties. They're, they're somehow a charitable organization. Yeah. That should be challenged. That doesn't believe in providing charity. <coughs> yeah. yeah, and of yeah. course, as treasurer, I resent it. You know, I'm forced to make all kind uh, of public information available on who's contributing to our uh, De Blair County Democratic Committee. You try to find out who's uh, funding the uh, Blair the tea County party? Tea Party. Can't find it. Can't find they're, it. They're That's, wrong. Yeah. That's wrong. That's wrong. But, but yet they're but yet they're making a big yeah. issue, saying the IRS is avoiding uh, uh, <coughs> testifying, taking the Fifth Amendment. I, I mean uh, that Daryl Issa. Uh, th there's yeah. another fellow who, who's uh, wasting a bunch of uh, money. Right, and there was an article in the paper today too that the that Daryl Issa has asked the IRS to provide millions of emails and correspondence between the White House and the IRS re involving this thing about challenging uh, the nonprofits for tax exemption and so on and and the chair and the IRS director said it'd take up to 5 years mm -hmm. and now ICE is threatening to charge him with contempt of court. Well, you know, uh, ISA is in conflict with the Republicans right now in any case yeah. because as chairman of his committee, he's um, been on chairman of his committee for two terms. Yeah, and he's and cannot, supposedly. Their rules state that, you know, after two terms, then they get a new chairperson. Uh, but he wants uh, an exemption. Speaker Boehner to exempt him from that so that he can continue his work. And we can hope that they don't. Now, we, we had one issue that I wanted to get to some comment on and I don't think we'll have a lot of time and that where there was a, a uh, story in the USA Today talking about how a majority of Americans who were surveyed think that there's nothing wrong with the state of government today a growing amount not quite a majority yet but yes, it's I more, thought it was 54 percent we saw 45 percent so well, that, that was the Republicans they, they, they thought oh, that was okay. yes the Republicans yeah. think Democrats it's fine. Yeah. They disagree and, that this and, is and how anybody can ex say that the current status of a lack of dialogue, a lack of trust, in fact, a fostering of animosity and, and vilifying things, you know, when you stand on the floor of the Congress or the Senate and personally condemn members of the other party, how can anybody say that's acceptable behavior? For 200 and some years, we've never conscienced that. Yeah. yeah. Now we have we have some other issues. I know we're going to have to bring up again, and we'll be back to s talk to you again in about two weeks. And you're going to see us probably three or four more times before the <laughs> primary election, if we can generate enough money. If you want to kick in a few bucks, contact the Democratic Party and help us because we want you to hear everything that is going to help you be a better citizen. And I want to thank our panel. And I know we didn't get enough time to cover everything, but we'll be back in in force. Have a good day, and remember, the Democratic Party cares for you and your health, safety, and welfare. Thank you.